good evening, everybody. Jim Hobbs coming at you with Keto Rocks. And we got a special guest with us tonight, uh, Regina Meyer, who I happened to read her story uh, on Dr. Ken Berry's uh, page. And it really inspired me in reading. The, you know, the great thing about the keto carnivore community is you guys are so transparent. You're awesome. You share your stories. You share where you're at. You share your trials, your tribulations. And people come alongside you and truly open up their lives to try to uh, help you achieve whatever goal that is for you. And, you know, Regina shared her whole life. She was sharing pictures of her back when she was 14 years old. And, and I'm going to let her share her story with you all here in a few moments. But it's people like Regina who share their lives, like where they've come from and where they are. And just before we started this show tonight, I had a chance to talk to Regina and she was telling me that, uh, you know, she hasn't got to her goal yet. So she's not a success story yet, but she's a success story. in the fact that she's taken a step to take control over her life and she's sharing where she's been. And I think you're really going to get a lot out of what, uh, she's going to share with you all tonight or whenever you get a chance to look at to listen to this podcast. So it's my honor and privilege, and thank you so much for coming on, Regina. How are you this evening? I'm doing well. Thank you, Jim. It's been it's a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, no, it's, a, it's, it's an honor to have you. Uh, why don't you share a little bit? You, we were talking before the show, but why don't you share a little bit about your journey, like where you started out at, how life is... Um, basically what you share with me it's amazing that you overcame what you had to deal with so why don't you share with everybody what uh, what your life started out at at age 14 or before yeah it, it was well before that um I have a few pictures of like me as a three-year-old a little chubby three-year-old so I have never known a day of being thin or being a regular size and basically my entire life has been, I'm either a size or a weight, but not an actual person. So I was the largest person in my family. And the, I remember ballooning at the age of nine from being almost normal, but a little chubby to extremely overweight, where you can tell from one school picture to another. And I wish I had those to show you, um, I looked like an adorable eight-year-old. And then in the picture when I'm nine years old, I, my sister would make fun of me and tell me I had a Cabbage Patch Kid smile because I, my face had ballooned so much that I couldn't really show my teeth when I smiled. And what I had found out later on is that I started puberty very young, around age nine but I didn't know it at the time because I didn't have like an actual menstrual cycle, things like that. Uh, what was going on with me was an extreme, extremely severe case of PCOS, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which was unheard of at the time. I was born in 1978. They didn't know much about that in, in the 80s. Um, by the time I reached age 13, 14, I was in the 380s. Uh, and I like to joke around that anytime I would pass by a carb, if it sensed my presence, I would gain 10 pounds because it was just my trajectory was up, 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 and there was no stopping it. Um, it got to the point where I was 13 years old. Um, my sister had left home for whatever reason she did. Uh, she's five years old and I, so she was 18 at the time. And it was just me and my parents. Uh, my parents sat me down and tried to find out psychologically what was wrong with me that kept me eating so much, even though they had closely monitored my intake. Uh, my mother had restricted me to one slim fast day, one slim fast shake a day uh, during that year. Uh, I call it my 13th year of hell. <laughs> um, and so, the, so let me tip, so I want everybody to hear this. So the only thing yeah. you were allowed to have on a daily basis was on a daily. one can. A slim One, fast? Well, it wasn't a can. It was the powder. Um, so I would scoop the powder into, the, uh, I believe it was milk. Yeah, I'd scoop the powder into the milk and then blend it until it was pudding. And that would be my entire meal for the day. And at the time, Slim Fast was mainly just like sugar, like in Shore, for example, oh, yes. it was just made of sugar. 
Um, and so I would eat that and I would savor every spoonful of that pudding. I'd carry it around with me when I was playing outside and I would just eat a spoonful here and there because that's all I would be, get to eat for the day. Um, and when I would go to school, my father would pick me up from school. We'd go straight to the gym for a workout and then I'd come home. Uh, so that was my life for an entire year when I was 15. Um, and I still gained weight doing that. And my parents swore up and down, I must be sneaking food at night. However, no food is missing. How can that be possible? Uh, they swore up and down, I must be eating at school. But it was a ghastly thought to me to put any food in my mouth in front of any other people because I would be heavily judged and watched. So no, I wasn't eating at, at school. Uh, they thought I might have been eating at friends' houses, so I wasn't really allowed to go over to my friends' houses. They they could come over and play with me so that I would be heavily monitored, and they tried to control my weight, and it just continued out of control, and there was nothing I could do. Now, let me just stop you right there. What were the, you obviously were seeing a doctor, I mean, right. during your annual checkup. What what were the doctors recommending your diet? Be? They, would, would they recommend a slim fast for... <laughs> you know, they, they gave my mother ideas, the, the slim fast thing, the, uh, the exercise daily thing, you know, it was the um, eat less, move more, but at the time, that's what, not what it was called. Um, and basically just monitor what I was eating, because clearly I was sneaking food somehow, like the doctors would tell my parents that I'm lying. Uh, and then my parents, you know, doing the best that they can and what they know how based on what the guidelines are, were feeding me what they thought was healthy. Up to that point, my mother would uh, cook very carb heavy meals. My, my dad's favorite was the spaghetti, but it would be pasta every day. And then she would still be cooking and everyone would be eating the pasta, but I would have the slim fast shake full of sugar. So I went from one sugar to another and nothing was helping. They tested my thyroid, I was fine. They tested me for diabetes, I was fine. But you know, they didn't have very extensive testing at that time. They didn't know what BCLS was. They didn't know that there were different types of tests to do for the thyroid function, but my thyroid has always been fine anyway, um, regardless. And they didn't know to test for metabolic syndrome or um, higher insulin levels or anything like that at the time. So just get a, give us a peek into your psyche because I cannot imagine being at that age, living off of one slim fast drink a day. What was your sleeping habits like? I, I, I would describe myself to sleep. I mean, you had to be starving. I wasn't though. I wasn't really? starving. Yeah, it, it's very strange because I've never had a terrible relationship with food. My entire life, I've never been a binge eater. I've never been an overeater. I've never been anorexic. <laughs> you know, I, if they told me to eat something, I'd eat it. If they told me not to eat something, I wouldn't. And it wouldn't affect me. It wouldn't impact me either way. My whole life was focused on my creative pursuits, my creative outlets, because that's what I had control over. I could, um, like when I said I was playing with my Barbies, um, I was designing and, and making clothes for them. You know, I, I would, uh, I got a, a keyboard for Christmas one year and I, I was writing songs and I was a singer all through high school. And these are the things that I focused all my time and attention into. And I was a very happy child. So I wasn't in like this deep depression, but in the back of my mind, I know I'm not an actual human being that's what was going on in my psyche. I'm not a person. I'm not um, allowed to be like other people are because there's something wrong with me and I'm defective. Now, how, so I was how finding you... my joy elsewhere and ignoring the whole food aspect. Right. So, so, music, so music brought you pleasure, brought you joy? Right. Okay. And then you also... We're looking to design, you're, if I'm hearing you correct, you design clothing? 
Well, I was designing and, and making clothing for my Barbies, but I really... Okay, so you're accessorizing your Barbie was, and living yeah. vicariously I, I was, through... I was her. using material and sewing things together, and, you know, making little patterns and things, but I, but, you know, just to dress my Barbies. <laughs> but that's what I would do, is I would do creative things like that. So I, I'm really heavy into crafting. Okay, now, how about your parents? You know, what were your parents? Did they have any issues that this would be passed down to or were they normal size or were well, they my, what was my mother and her family were larger people but never as large as what I got to. Um, my mother and her parents oh, were all diabetics her brothers and sisters as well uh, she's one of seven and she didn't actually get heavy until after she started having children and she also had ovarian cysts um, around age 38 is when my mother had to have her hysterectomy and remove mm. her uterus. Uh, but she was able to have a couple of kids because her condition wasn't as severe as what I ended up with. But she was a diabetic from the age of 33 when she was diagnosed. She would she was on insulin. Um, she had a what we like to call the Coke habit because she couldn't let go of her Coke. Um, she liked Coke and not Pepsi. And so she'd still have her one Coke a day and then, you know, bolus with her insulin to bring down her sugar. And she'd test me uh, since she had the testing strips in the machine available, she would test me daily and I, my sugar levels were fine. Wow. So fast forward so you you got through high school so when you got out of high school graduated high school what was your weight when you graduated high school when i graduated high school i was at a, at 415 pounds wow yeah um which now that, oddly now, enough oddly yeah, enough through high school i was in the show choir four years i was singing and dancing every single day i was not eating maybe once a day and never at school where anyone could see me right. only at home where I could be monitored. Uh, whenever we would have like a Thanksgiving dinner with all of our family, I would put little portions on my plate. That's all I would eat while everyone else was feasting. And I would be praised for not eating a lot. So there was a no, you were in a catch 22 position. I mean, mm -hmm. no matter what, what you did, it was wrong. Right. And yet, so when did, when did your light bulb, when did things change in your life? When, when did all of a sudden made you make this trip down to, to where you are today? Well, it took a while. I um, found, met and married my husband in 2015. And at the time, well, at age 26 is when I know I was at 425 pounds. I stopped weighing at that point. It was just ridiculous to me. And from then on, I didn't know what my weight was. So I call my highest weight 425, but it was likely higher than that. Um, when I married my husband in 2015, I know I was at 415 then, and I had lost some weight. Because I remember my grandmother commented uh, on my wedding day when she came, oh, you look like you've lost weight from when I had seen her in February of the same year. Right. And... <laughs> And it was funny, my aunt was there too, and she says, oh, Regina, Grandma says you've lost a lot of weight, and Grandma types up, I didn't say a lot. <laughs> my grandma, you gotta love her, she's 96 now. Um, oh. But <laughs> after I married my husband, uh, you know, and he, he loves me no matter what, he's very supportive of every decision that I make, and he recognizes uh, that I'm a very intelligent person, that I know how to do research, and that I know what I'm talking about. So he'll trust and go along with pretty much anything I say. Uh, he was reading the book Freakonomics. I don't know if you're familiar, but in that book, there's a, it basically each chapter is like, here's something that we think should be the case, but it's actually the opposite. And that's kind of neat and interesting. Well, there was a, a chapter on diet and there was this, um, I think Seth Roberts originated a diet called Shangri-La, mm -hmm. wherein, uh, I mean, it, what it ended up being was intermittent fasting with extra steps. 
but he had this strange idea of if you intake something with um, with no taste but calories, such as a flavorless oil of some kind, like a light tasting olive oil, and up to four tablespoons, tablespoons depending on your weight, just down some oil, then it would help you fast throughout the day and only eat one meal at a certain time of day. So I'm like, well, if that's working for some people, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. Why not try everything out? So, sorry. So um, I started trying that and my husband of course thinks I'm insane. But in conjunction with that, I was also, you know, like, well, then I'm just going to eat a salad. I'm going to eat a salad. I'm going to drink this oil. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I started doing that. And I did lose down to 374 pounds doing that. But it was very not sustainable. <laughs> it was rid a ridiculous diet. No one ever do that, please. <laughs> so um, that's like my first time that I ever was successful in losing any monochrome of weight. And I was like, if I can lose weight doing this, there's got to be some mechanism that's going to allow me to lose weight. And I have to find that. And then so I was still doing this. Um, I then gave up because it was really difficult. And then it was, it was like between... Um, I want to say December of 2018 and March of 2019 that I just gained back up to 402 pounds. And by my husband's birthday, March 24th, I was 402. And I was mad at myself. I was angry because I had let myself get back up there. Um, so I started researching again. I started back on that stupid oil regimen again. And I dropped some weight down to 386 doing that. And that's when I found Dr. Eric Berg. Yes. And I started watching his videos and I'm like, what is this keto thing? And I'm already eating the salads. And no wonder the oil was working with the salads because that's basically what he was prescribing to do. So I continued it, but I changed my salads to where they had keto ingredients. I dropped the oil and I started eating salads once a day but they were keto salad. And then right. that was working. And then I started researching more and more, finally ending up at Dr. Ken Berry, whom I love and adore. <laughs> uh, and he, you know, led me down the path of proper human diet. And now I am carnivore. And as of today, awesome. I'm at 293 pounds. That is awesome. <laughs> You no, have I'm to not a complete so, yet. I still have a goal. No, 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 <laughs> no. Listen, the fact, I mean, I, I'm telling you, your story is going to encourage a lot of people because what you've endured and have gone through uh, and then to still have the, the knowing of there's more, there's more to you and you want to do the research to find out what that is, what to do to bring that out, which is what you've done. And kudos to your husband for, 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 for knowing who you are, regardless of what size package you come in. And the fact that he supports you no matter what you're doing, kudos to him. He, he's, a, he's a good guy. Yeah, and uh, the fact that I just see the, the joy coming from your face, the joy that you, where you've came from, I can't wait to. So what's your, what's your end goal? Do you have an end goal? I do. I do. Um, it's an arbitrary scale number because, you know, scale is a lying liar that lies. Um, <laughs> but I would like to see a 170 at some point. That would be amazing. I've never seen that. <laughs> um, I want to get down to a healthy BMI, but knowing that BMI really only matters when you're overweight or obese, uh, but within like healthy ranges, BMI really makes no sense at all. Uh, but I do want to see in like my health apps and things that I'm no longer obese. That would be great. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I have no doubt that you will, you'll do that. Now, how long have you been carnivore? 
Carnivore, I started at like, I want to say it was the end of 2018. Okay. So I, I have been studying nothing but nutrition, watching the conference videos uh, from like um, low carb Houston, low carb Denver, low carb down under, just anything I can get my hands on on YouTube. Uh, any studies I can read, any books that I can get my hands on and have just been studying it for two years, two, two longer than two years now. Uh, so I am, I'm very up on the mechanisms that are making me lose weight. Uh, right now I am carnivore on my eating days and then I do water fasting. So I'm doing a regimen that I don't recommend unless you're under a doctor's care and I am. Uh, and I don't recommend for anyone who doesn't need to lose a substantial amount of weight, and especially not for anyone who uh, is actually finding so, some sustainable success through keto already. I wasn't right. having success. I was stalled for a year at around 3.30. So I had to go more drastic. Uh, and now I'm doing five-day fast, a, whole, a total of 120 hours per week of water fasting with two days where I eat and I eat only wow. carnivore. Uh, this morning I ate a, a chicken thigh and a chicken leg. And then I had about um, a half cup of a keto chocolate mousse that I made out of a uh, cocoa powder sweetener, um, heavy whipping cream and cream cheese. So just to get this straight, cause when you were telling your back in your childhood and you were not eating but one slim fast a day, you pretty much were already doing fasting. I mean, you definitely were doing intermittent fasting right. for sure. So when you saw, now I, I, I go through fasting stages. Like there's, there's times, there's seasons where I'll do at least every week, I'll do three days of, of, of fasting. Um, I'll do three days in a row or I'll space them out. Once I get past the first day, I could probably go as long as I want because it's, right. it's, I'm not hungry at that point and my energy comes from, from someplace and uh, I feel actually really good. It's almost like after the third day, I go, well, you know, I should, I should eat something. But honestly, I could go another, I've never gone longer than three days, but the fact that you do five days every week, now you do five straight days in a row? Five or straight do you break days in a row, 120 hours. Um, wow. And the reason that I can do that is because I have so much food stored on my body as fat. So I'm not losing out in calories in any way. And I hate the word calories. Calories yes. don't mean anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to use that, but you know, for the <laughs> sake of understanding, um, the, my energy comes from the fat stores on my body. Uh, and the fat stores contain all the building blocks we need for nutrition. So right. there's no concern about, oh, you're not getting your fruits and vegetables, where are you getting your, your minerals and vitamins and all of this? Well, bio uh, bioavailable nutrition is in your own fat stores, and that's why you have the mechanism to gain weight in the first place. That's what it's for. Right. <laughs> so right. Now, it's a ridiculous now notion. So the doctor, obviously you're seeing somebody who believes in carnivore and keto. I, I have an open-minded doctor who is working with me and reading the information that I'm giving him. Okay. But he's not in a position knowledge-wise to help me more than I can help myself because I have more knowledge of nutrition than he does. But I am helping him learn what to do for someone like me. I think what you just said, I hope people caught what Regina just said because that's, the majority of people out there, nobody knows your body better than yourself. And so when you go out and do the research for you and you learn things like Regina's learned keto and carnivore and knows her body and knows what's working, what's not working. Doctors do not, physicians do not have to go through nutritional classes in order to be a doctor. So it can be a win-win for both the patient as well as the physician, the doctor, 
and, and it sounds like you got a great relationship that he's open to reading what you're giving to him and that's helping him or her uh, as well um, as well as him being able to monitor what you're doing from a medical side just to make sure you're truly not damaging your body right and the fact that and and and, and what she said you know, listen you don't go to your doctor and say, I know more than you do. You go there and with a servant's heart to, to have them supervise what you want to do to make sure you're not really going to damage your body for long term. And in the process, if you do it the right way, you'll be able, it'll be a win-win. The doctor will gain knowledge. He also will gain credibility from the fact that he now, if he comes across somebody that has uh, have done what, or the cross that you had to bear, he will or she will be able to maybe offer this up because it's not taught to them to offer this up. They are definitely going to have to learn it, whether through you or through many Regina's uh, coming there and going, hey, I, I, you know, I've read this book by Dr. Barry or or, or any of the number of other uh, doctors that have come out of the closet, so to speak, and have supported the keto carnivore lifestyle. The fact that you did it, the fact that you've been doing carnivore, and I want everybody to understand, you heard her say that she does not recommend anybody doing a five-day fasting, it's for, it's, it's, it, but she's in a position to be able to do it, and she's under... Uh, medical supervision to make sure she's not harming herself but the fact that she's doing it and doing it the right way now is your grandmother still alive now yes she says she's 96 right she Almost is 96. 90, 96 what is she has she seen you lately she hasn't seen me since december of last year and as i i uh, not last year but the year before um 2018 and that's when I was at 325, I had hit my 100 pound loss. Uh, and you know, it's, it's not a lot of loss between then and now because I was still, like I said, for a year at around 330. Like I got down to 325 and then back up to the 330 to 335 range and I was stuck. I went to see Dr. Barry in Tennessee and to make him my doctor, this was just a few days before his clinic burned, by the way. Oh. Um, <laughs> but I went and saw, I saw him in May, 2019, and he had tried me on hormone replacement because I was low on my female hormones, um, having PCOS already having gone through menopause, didn't even realize it. Uh, and that stalled me completely. And I even regained to 350 doing that. And then I found my new doctor after, um, Dr. Barry decided not to continue with his clinic practice after the fire. Uh, and my new doctor took me off and said, you know, let's see how this does for you. Um, and then my weight dropped immediately 30 pounds back to the 320s. And from there I was stalled. It, this was around September. And then I decided uh, when we went into quarantine mid-March, that's when I would go hard into the fasting and you know I'm not going to gain the quarantine 19 <laughs> and uh, I'm not gonna gain the COVID-19 as it were um and I decided I'm not going backward I'm only going forward let's see if this fasting regimen works so working with my doctor you know he gave me the go ahead and we're good um I'm supplementing with electrolytes and vitamin D as I'm doing it and I lost uh, it's now 37 pounds since mid-March at this point doing this regimen. Wow. That's great. How are you feeling? How I are feel you amazing. Feeling? I, uh, so today was an eating day. Um, my eating days were Thursdays and Fridays. And then, uh, so up until this morning, I had had no food and I felt amazing because my body is giving me my food. That is just absolutely great. So what would you recommend somebody who's, who's watching this, who maybe is in high school or maybe in their 20s or 30s, it doesn't matter what their age is, 
and they struggle with diff different diets. They, they struggle with counting the calories and, and move more than you consume and, and the whole, you know, trim the fat, all this. So before, we, before you answer that question, so when you say you go carnivore, so what's some of, like what on your Thursdays and Fridays, what's some of the food that you eat on Thursdays and Fridays? Well, um, I don't shy away from sausage. So, you know, there are the, the hardcore, you have to have the grass-fed uh, panda massage beef, as Dr. Barry would say. Um, but I don't. I get the Walmart specials. You know, right now I have, uh, we found two 17-pound briskets uh, about a month mm -hmm. ago, and we chopped them up into three-pound bags and froze them. So I pull out like three pounds of brisket meat uh, that's cubed up into about two inch cubes. I toss that in my pressure cooker with a little bit of uh, about a quarter cup of vinegar and um, about a tablespoon of soy sauce. Yes, I use soy sauce, I'm evil. And a little bit of seasoning, chili powder, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper. And I let that go for 45 minutes on the high pressure and it comes out perfect. It's a perfect uh, roast. And then I portion that up because we've got three people in the house that I feed. So uh, my portion is only the meat. And then other people in my house, like I'll make carbs for the one roommate that we have. And my husband gets just a, a maintenance keto meal because he has lost about 60 pounds himself doing this. And so he's a normal weight now. Um, but my meal is just meat on the plate and I eat until I'm satisfied. And if I can't eat all of it, I give the rest to him. That's one of the meals. Uh, I also like to do bacon cheeseburgers. So I just do like a burger patty with cheddar cheese on it and bacon. That's delicious. So like I can have one or two of those depending on my hunger level, um, but that's about it. And then uh, like the two pieces of chicken I had this morning for my meal, uh, I had a chicken thigh and a chicken leg, and I just seasoned those with some uh, salt, pepper, smoked paprika, and Italian seasoning. That's like the perfect seasoning combination for chicken, just so you know. And then a little bit of spray oil, like avocado oil or something like that. Toss it in my air fryer at 380 for 28 minutes, and it's good. I do very simple meals. Sorry about that. I just I just jumped out. My internet just died. You guys all froze <laughs> on the screen. Anyway, I see Brian has joined us. Hey, Brian, yes, how hi. are you? Doing? Oh man, I have to apologize. You know, you you asked me if, is Thursday cool, and I'm like sure. And then I I get on this phone call and just forgot. I was just. And the phone call went way longer than I thought it was going to. But uh, that's okay. I thought I was. I told I told Regina I was. Today's been totally a messed up day. And I was like scrambling to, to get here and I thought I was going to be late and Regina was on. And then I was like, then I went to go text you, Brian. And I saw you had been on the internet for like 18 hours, right? It was a long time ago. Oh my gosh. I hope he's okay. And I was like, man, who knows what happens in Nashville? There's always a tornado earthquake. I said, well, I'll, I'll check on them afterwards. So well, I was, I was actually making a, uh, a food video earlier. So, you know, those things take up all day. So I'm not on the computer like I normally am. <laughs> well, Regina was just talking about, she just, she just got a, a how, how big of a brisket? You cut it down to two, uh, three We pounds. found two 17 pound briskets that were wow. about a dollar a pound really? about a month, month or so ago. And then we cut them down into uh, two inch cubes and packaged them up into three pound bags and then froze them. So we're still eating through that. Wow, that brisket is one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a stovetop smoker that I've used in the past to do ribs and brisket, um, but it's a lot of work and it smokes up my kitchen. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's why I bought a grill so I could do all my mm -hmm. smoky stuff outside. <laughs> it does taste good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, Jim, you have you have a Traeger, right? I have a Traeger. Yes, I have a Traeger and a Master Grill. I haven't showed. I don't. God. The, the trigger is just so easy to do it's just you know well, you, i go outside i turn the switch on and it starts to smoke right yeah well that's that was what that phone call was i was talking to mark shanker because he got a trigger um 
they sent it to him. I, I don't know if I told you this story, but he, um, well, maybe I shouldn't say it on, online, <laughs> but, well, but we'll anyway, he got, he got a save Traeger. It, save it afterwards. Yeah, he got a Traeger and, uh, but he also got a, he has a coupon, uh, like a discount code that, that he wanted to know if I wanted to use it. And it's, a, it's like a 25% off discount code, like a nice chunk. So, um, I've been thinking about it just after wrestling with that Weber Smoky Mountain that I have. <laughs> it's like, well, so I will tell, I, I, well, it's safer than what you did last time for sure. But <laughs> the tra but the Traeger, when I first got it, my wife, I, I, she couldn't stand it. She's like, she didn't like it. So why? I said, well, I just think it's got so much potential. So I, but the last, you just got to get used to it because it is finicky for whatever reason. And it's finicky when you try to keep it clean like they say to afterwards. If you just let the thing season, it seems to like to be seasoned. So since I've no clean it anymore, I just let it be seasoned. It works a lot better. And, and now I'm beginning to really love what it's able to do. And the ribs that I smoked the other night, the other day, oh my gosh, they were delicious. Yeah. Well, I'm just so I'm going. So I'm going to Costco to I'm going to Costco tomorrow, Brian and, and Regina, and buying brisket. I'm buying brisket tomorrow at Costco. Are you sure they have it? it? Well, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, I I don't know because there are limited amount of meats that you can purchase these days. So if they don't have it, I'll go to my Whipple Tree Farm and, and my local farm to get it. But I'm getting brisket. I'm going to do the the brisket thing, and I'm going to do – I'm going to be Brian's recipe. I'm, I have not done short ribs before. Short ribs I have never done. That That's in my – thawing in my uh, refrigerator at the moment. That's what I'm doing there, tomorrow. <laughs> then I'll watch your video whenever you load up the video for tomorrow then. <laughs> have either of you heard about that Eat Wild website where you can go and find um, like local farmers that will sell you – like as little as an eighth of a cow. Oh, I've seen that. Buy shares of beef. Yeah, Eat Wild is the website. That's yeah, it. it's called. What's it called? It's called eatwild.com. Eat Wild. Yeah. We'll put that in the show notes. No, I uh, I told this. I don't know why I told it on the air or off the air to Brian, but I had just Regina just bought a half a cow, and the problem is though I cannot. I cannot find a freezer. Like I have a freezer, but it's it's an old freezer, and I it, it's not a false free false frost free freezer. And now I cannot find a freezer. Like I've been to every box store, and they're saying they're not going to have them in until July or August now. Yeah, that's so, why. I, yeah, that's why I haven't bought in bulk because I don't have enough room. Yeah. So I got. I have to find a freezer, but I bought. I bought half a cow, and. Uh, so I will have a half a cow to eat during the next six months or a year, however long it takes me to, to eat it. But R Regina, so tell a little bit. So something I think you started before we actually started the show. So your mom had diabetes, right? Yeah, she had so, diabetes uh, from the age of 33. Um, and, you know, she was on the standard uh, eat a whole bunch of pasta and grains diet. Um, low fat, low calorie, and eat less, move more, and hear bolus with with insulin when we need it. Uh, she couldn't drop her Coke habit. She loved drinking those things. Uh, so she would have to bolus with insulin every time she did one. Um, and she would eat things like an entire loaf of French bread, hollowed out, and then put like hamburger meat and peas in it and just eat that. <laughs> like, okay that's the worst combination now i know that but you know that's what she would eat and then that would be her meal for the day um and unfortunately she ended up with severe kidney disease on dialysis up to four days a week at the end of her life and she passed on her 55th birthday uh, her heart gave out so um it was it was tr a tragic for me especially finding out later in life that she was on such the improper diet she shouldn't have been on so much insulin and none of this should have happened it could have been prevented and you know i go back in my own mind and think could i have saved my mother 
And so that has what spurred me on to share my story with as many people as I possibly can just to spread the word and say, hey, let's look at nutrition. Let's give it another look. And can we please, please change our food guidelines because they are incredibly wrong and they are going to kill people. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, so many people look at my diet and they think I'm going to kill myself. Right. And it's like, it's the opposite. <laughs> it's like, I, this is the way you're supposed to eat. Like what you're doing is going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Like as I was telling Jim earlier, um, my body has fat stores on it. And the reason why there's a mechanism to store fat is because you can live off fat. It's healthy for you. And that's what it's for. <laughs> right. Well, I, I think it's just so awesome, Regina, that you overcome, you fought your way through where you were. And I just think you're such an inspiration to, to other people and to be willing to go on Dr. Barry's page and share your life openly, like so many other uh, people do on those pages. This, you know, that's why I said the keto carnivore community is such a, a, honest transparent group and they're so supportive of one another and and being open because they want to be better and the fact that you've been willing to share your story openly and willing to come on here and share your story about you know even your childhood uh, truly thank you thank you because i think people there's probably more reginas out there and, and you're giving them so much hope to be able to to fight through what traditional uh, diets or traditional medicine, like your, what your mom was, was given, unfortunately. And for those who deal with diabetes, it's not a death sentence anymore. There's food is fuel and food is medicine. And so if we start to realize that there's, there's, we have the power, like you're doing a five day a week fast and, and then carnivore on your two days and, and you're down to, 300 what's your where 380 uh right now i'm at 293 293 yeah wow 293 yeah i didn't mean to put a three there 293 yeah. <laughs> from, from oh it's from fine four. i was in the threes for the longest time so i'm used to it <laughs> no i i just i mean that's just truly amazing and the fact that you know you want to be down to 170 and you're you're taking the steps and you're sharing your journey that's the that's the important part you're you're dropping kernels of popcorn so other people can follow your, your path. And that's just so important. You know, more and more people, you know, live their life to show what's possible. And that's exactly what you're doing. And so um, I... One more thing that I uh, wanted to point out specifically for people like me, um, this took no exercise. What I'm doing was strictly diet. Uh, I do move... Um, when I take the dogs for a walk, when I do my housework, when I'm uh, bouncing around the kitchen, getting the meals prepped and cooked. But other than that, I'm fairly sedentary. And yet I have lost 135 pounds doing this. So that is basically just showing that eat less, move more is BS for lack of a better phrase. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what I've been told my entire life and somehow it's my fault that I gained up to 425 pounds but it really wasn't it was entirely the my body's hormonal hormonal response to the food i was consuming and now that i've changed the food that i'm consuming and my body is responding better hormonally i can now shed the weight without doing anything else yeah that's what they say about the you know either keto or carnivore you know, that's the core, that's the main thing to start with is the diet and, and you will, you'll lose the weight and you'll also gain muscle in, at, at the same time. And I'm not saying exercise isn't good and healthy. It is, please exercise because it's amazing for other reasons, but it's not for weight loss. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that, you know, that we overlook, you know, and, and actually Brian said something a couple of weeks ago or last week, whatever show it was, it kind of got me to re-examine myself why I went keto and carnivore. It's, you know, you're, when you go to keto and carnivore, you're literally giving your brain the ability to start functioning as well. And so it, 
by going keto and carnivore, when you start to actually do it, there's a internal motivation to want to do more. And so you're motivated. All of a sudden you have the energy to want to go exercise and, and do that. But, and I say that, you know, it's still hard. The mind still wants to, to mess with you. But the reality of it is you, you have the passion to, to want to keep improving because your brain's just functioning that way. And so, you know, I, that's why I, when, I think when people start to start out just get eliminating sugar out of their life, it's a first step in, in a step toward bettering their life through better living. And it becomes a lifestyle. And just through that lifestyle, they'll start to progress to the next level, the next level, the next level, the next level, and to the point where they they are where they want to be, and then that's just how their their days are. You know, their their days are like now, Regina. If you got to one seventy, do you think you would back off the five days down to four days, or where would you be your maintenance? Yeah, right now I'm doing specifically for weight loss, so I'm going hard into fasting and carnivore um, because it's what it it's what works for me when other things don't. So I know how to maintain because I did it for over a year, maintaining at 330. So I know what my maintenance looks like at this weight. When I get down to a lower weight, I understand my cues as to when I've had enough to eat, I just stop eating. Um, and the body regulates itself to a healthy weight. So it's not like you're going to continue losing weight if you continue eating a certain way and then you're just going to shrivel up and die. No. Right. Uh, what happens is if you're hungry, you're going to know you're hungry. You're going to eat some food. And when you're not hungry, you're not. And if you're, it seems like you're eating a little, it's because your body doesn't need it at that point. And then you don't lose or gain. You're maintaining at that point when you're listening to the cues that your body's given you. So right now I'm on a weight loss plan and then I know what to do to switch to maintenance when I need to. Awesome. So tell us, tell us before we, before we let you go, I got to know who the panda is behind you. I got to know what's <laughs> the story behind the little panda. Uh, my panda, her name is Gracie. Uh, she actually lights up. She's amazing. I knew she had. Yeah, she lights up and she changes color. Uh, pandas are my thing. Uh, my coffee cup, <laughs> panda on one side, name on the other, got my panda necklace going on. But I love pandas. Every year for Halloween, I dress like a panda. Uh, it's just my favorite animal. And this is something that my roommate just got me for my birthday. So she sits in here with me while I'm working. Yeah, I don't know if you heard, uh, Gracie was a birthday present from my roommate. What's that? What's that? Repeat that one more time, Regina. Uh, my panda, Gracie. She was a birthday present from my roommate. Gotcha. Gotcha. So how, how, how old is Gracie? Well, my birthday was in April, so that's how old she is. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Well, awesome. Awesome. Brian, you got any questions for Regina? It's your story. You'll hear the front half of it. It's amazing. Yeah, I know. I missed the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, I... Oh, I <laughs> I usually don't space on, you know, it, I think I told you, I, I set my alarm on my phone yeah. for stuff like this. And today I didn't for some reason. I don't know why I didn't do that. Otherwise, I w this wouldn't have happened. But yeah, I so apologize for, for missing it. It's okay. It's okay. Those things happen. I don't find it to be very exciting, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's always interesting, though, like listening <laughs> to somebody's journey, you know? Yeah. Uh, I still don't consider myself a success story yet. Uh, what I'm, what my dream is to get down to my goal and buy a plane ticket, one seat, and get on the plane and watch no one watch me, <laughs> and then sit down next to someone who isn't bothered that I'm sitting down next to them, and then buckle my safety belt. <laughs> that's what I so want to do. <laughs> well, that's that sounds awesome. You let us know when that day, and if you don't mind, we'd love to to have you on every now and then just to check in how your prog yeah. how your progress is sure, is going. And then we'd love we'd love to sit there and do and and do your story when you go do that plane trip. Yeah, and, I will uh, definitely be filming that when it happens. <laughs>
I mean, people might that's, look at me like I'm crazy, but I think everyone in the world is filming themselves doing something these days. So it won't be so out of place, that, I guess. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, listen, we'll stay safe. Stay well. Thank you so much. It's an mm -hmm. honor to have you come on and share the story. You're, I mean, truly, my uh, my hats off to you for, for what you've what you've done and what you're Thank continuing you so to much. do and inspiring others. So keep keep doing what you're doing. You truly are inspiring others, and I uh, just wish you all the success in the world. Thank you so much, and and I appreciate you guys having me on. It's been a pleasure tonight. Um, and so far, I'm enjoying what you guys are doing, and keep putting it out there because. The more information we have out there, the more people we can help and we can save lives. Right. Yeah. Awesome. That's what it's definitely, all about. Definitely about well, spreading the word. <laughs> yep. So help us spread the word, everybody. And make sure you, uh, if you watch this video, to give us a thumbs up, like it, share it. Um, and hopefully we will uh, see you again next week. Same time, same place, same people. And uh, Brian, you got anything to say? Yeah, I'll set my alarm next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's a tip for Brian. So anyway, you guys have a good week. Stay safe, and we'll see you next week. Take care, everybody.